All right, welcome to the November 2022 episode of the Presale Pulse, a real estate show dedicated to everything happening in real estate across Metro Vancouver and the Fraser Valley. I'm Ryan Lalonde, and of course, here with me today is my co host, Susanna Gonzalez. That's right, you heard it, you've been officially upgraded as co host. <laughs> it only took me two years. I actually feel like you're the anchor, and I'm just along for the ride. <laughs> Uh, no surprise, the economy has dominated the news. Rai, why don't you start and kick us off? Well, let's go big picture here, if that's all right. Um, we've talked a lot in the past about the Bank of Canada's ongoing crusade right now against inflation. It's a thing. Uh, and it does seem like we're seeing some indications that the Canadian economy is slowly beginning to cool down. Uh, and that's a big shift. Yeah, GDP is estimated to increase an annualized 1.5% in Q3, down from the 3.3% seen in Q2. And we're seeing many other contributors to inflation decline as well. One key indicator is the rate of wage increases, which has similarly slowed over the past quarter. Now, I think perhaps some of the, the most important data was really encouraging to see from central bankers. I think that what we want to see is these shifts, right? We're noting that interest rates are having a really positive impact on curbing inflation. That's important for us right now. Yeah, the Bank of Canada opted for a 50 basis point increase rather than the 75 point increase that was widely expected by analysts. The increase is still significant though, and its impact is being felt quickly across the markets. Appearing before the Senate, Governor Macklem defended the smaller move, stating that the signs that previous rate hikes are beginning to drag on the economy. At the same time, he signaled that the bank was not done with more planned hikes before leveling off in 2020. Yeah, I, I mean, the biggest headache for Macklin right now is in the U.S. The, that economy, unlike ours, still appears to be steaming full steam ahead. Uh, Federal Reserve uh, response made history by approving the fourth consecutive 75 basis point increase to its key lending rate. It's a problem because in many ways, the Bank of Canada is forced to keep up with the Fed's increases. Now, the problem is that if Canada opts for a slower rate of increase, the higher U.S. interest rates will encourage capital outflow from Canada and into the U.S. Yeah, this will result in a weak Canadian dollar against the USD. And since the US is by far our biggest trading partner, this increased cost of imported goods, and I don't want to say it right, but increases inflation. Uh, so true. Uh, we either target uh, a lower Canadian dollar or we target higher inflation. And right now, the Bank of Canada is very set on curbing inflation. Now, it's the reality of being a relatively small economy next to an international trading partner. Sues our economic fates. They're often closely intertwined, as we know. We will be sure to keep a close eye on both markets during these uncertain times. We're going to keep up with our viewers and making sure that they're keeping their finger on the pulse. Yeah, all of this is to say we will be in a recession come the new year. Now, reflecting on October, we saw seven pre-sale programs launch, bringing just under 600 units to the market. Now, launch activity was predominantly in Greater Vancouver, a trend we've been seeing over the last two months. Now, part of the reason why is that these more established markets here in Greater Vancouver, with a proven track record of pre-sale programs, provide just a bit more peace of mind for buyers and sellers alike during these times of market uncertainty. Uh, we've always heard Cameron talk about blue chip real estate. Love that that is exactly where the market is pushing towards uh, today. Now, First and Royal, this is a much anticipated program in New West. Uh, blew the doors down, 150 deals within the first month of sales. That's a great outcome uh, for the fall market. Price point, again, likely the key driver, 935 per square foot. Uh, it's hard to find anything under a thousand bucks these days. It's sharp when you consider both uh, the transacting in both Surrey and Burnaby's market. New West is somewhat unique for Greater Vancouver's market as well. The only other pre-sale product available are two nearly sold out concrete towers expected to complete in 2023, so a little bit of space there. Pre-sale offerings launching in New West today will have the advantage of a longer time horizon and a little competition by way of programs within its submarket. Yeah, now same month absorptions were 39% in October, outpacing September and August by about 7 to 9%. This follows seasonal shifts typical in the resale market that saw an increase in demand over the last several weeks as well. Like that's a big number, right? Like a huge improvement from where we were the last two months. But also only 600 units released. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, touching on the November market, we're experiencing, we're, experiencing, we're expecting six programs to launch, making up just over 750 homes. Several programs have already begun to launch. SoCo 2 allowed buyers to submit expression of interest forms on November 2nd and ended up closing the portal to submit from within an hour given just the total intakes that they've received. The program's blending again around the low 1000s price per square foot. It's kind of rolling prices back to a 2021 and a little bit before. 
a stark contrast to the recent launches in the North Road corridor that are kind of sitting around 1140 plus. Buyers will now have the choice of price point over convenience and walkability. It's going to be really interesting to see how the program performs long term. Yeah, now quickly touching on some other upcoming programs. Amazing Brentwood Tower 6 is taking suite request forms until November 8th. Our preliminary analysis indicates they're targeting about 1400 bucks a square foot, a big number. Previously, Shape has benefited from a strong realtor network and connection to international buyers. So we'll see how far it takes their latest offering in this market, given some of the changes we're seeing in China. Now, skipping over to resale, the October resale market in Greater Vancouver followed a typical seasonal pattern for our fall market, increasing just slightly, but overall demand remained historically low. There were just over 1,900 resales in October, which is about 13% increase from September, just a touch higher than the 9 to 11% increase we usually see during this time of year. However, this was also 33% below the 10-year average for October. Yeah, thanks, Sue. Like, I, I do think that most race, uh, some of the most recent rate increases, as well as the forecast, of another significant rate hike at the end of the month likely loomed over the heads of those that were really wishing to transact in today's market. Buyers are just one side of the story here. On the supply side, we're not seeing listings increasing alongside the increased fall activity. New listings actually declined 1.2% month over month, which has supported an overall balanced market. This is a further establishing the hold mindset of sellers in today's market. That means that prices will continue to hold as long as we see that balance between buyer side demand and seller side supply. Yeah, the combined effect, Rai, is that prices continue to decline in October, although at a much slower rate than, of course, they had originally increased at uh, all of 2021. Comps and benchmark pricing now declined only 0.6% month over month, although we do expect some further price softening as we look forward to the end of the year. And that pricing gap between resale and pre-sale is top of mind for us right now in terms of how we project Q1 and Q2 of next year. So something we're paying very close attention to. Suze, I believe that that sums up the real estate intelligence for this month. Now be sure to subscribe to our channel and Newswire, our daily re email roundup of the latest real estate news. Our internal MLA advisory team is active in all major markets, providing actionable intelligence across Canada. So reach out to us using the links below. Yeah, and lastly, don't miss out on this month's trending topic, featuring the fallout from the local election and some of the government policies affecting the housing market that we have coming on the horizon. See you next month.